In previous tutorial, we have seen how to uh, design impedance matching networks between two resistive elements by using the Smith chart. We've looked at networks which comprise of two elements of the L section type, and we've seen how these networks, although very simple, do not allow you to design for a specific queue. We also saw how we can circumvent this problem by using a three element matching and this can be of different types but the type that we looked at was a T-section. We also saw how to calculate the Q of the network algebraically and then how to uh, get the loaded Q from the frequency response and we've seen how these two compare. In this tutorial we will design a matching network with uh, two resistive terminations yet again but in this case, unlike the previous case with the T-section will have a load resistance which is greater than the uh, source resistance. We will shortly see how in this case it is actually easier to implement a P-type matching network rather than a T-type. So as usual we start by selecting our frequency of operation and then by setting our global units to millisiemens for conductance, nanoherry for inductance and picofarads for capacitance. Then we'll open a new schematic by right-clicking and selecting New Schematic. We'll call it Pi Match. And then the first thing that we're going to put on, as usual, is a measurement port, which we can add by pressing Ctrl P and clicking on the schematic. And then a load resistance, which we can get by pressing Ctrl L and typing in RES. Then we can add a ground by pressing Ctrl G. We'll set the value for our load resistor to 125 ohms since we said that we want to look at the case in which the load resistance is greater than the source resistance and then we connect the two together. Now let's create a new graph, a Smith chart and uh, we'll also call this pi match and then we'll add a measurement on the chart by right clicking, selecting add a new measurement and then uh, selecting S11 which is our reflection coefficient and also allows us to display the impedance the data source name will select to be our pi match schematic. Click on apply and then OK. Then simulate. Now we can just press Ctrl M and click on the point of interest to add a marker. And you can see that we are getting a marker readout at the moment in a normalized fashion. But what we can do as we know is change this readout to be denormalized. So let's do just that by right clicking on the chart, going on to properties, then onto the markers tab and choosing the Z display to be denormalized to 50 ohms. Click on apply and then OK. And we can see that everything is working well and what we are seeing is a 125 ohm impedance. So my starting point is 125 ohms and then I want to get to the center of the chart which is my 50 ohm point. And uh, I want to design a network which comprises of three elements. So one of the design goals that I can add as well as a source and a load impedance is the Q of the network and let's say that we will design for a Q of 2. As we saw in the previous tutorial we can display lines of constant Q on the Smith chart by right clicking on the chart going on to add a new measurement then selecting circle under the linear measurement type and then Q count. We now type in the value of Q which we desire, which is 2, click on apply and then OK. Then to display the actual lines we have to simulate. So now we've got a reflection coefficient of our circuit displayed on the chart and we've got our lines a constant Q. What we have to do next is, uh, as usual, change the appearance of the chart to make it more legible. We right click on the chart, go on to properties and then on the grid tab we select both impedance and admittance grids, but we take off the values. And then we'll choose the contour density to be coarse. We'll also go on to the Format tab and change the color of the impedance lines to green and the color of the admittance lines to red. Click on Apply and then OK. And now we are back to our usual representation of the chart. So uh, my starting point is right here and I need to get to this point here. But uh, I need to use three elements to get there and uh, by using three elements this means that I will have two interim points between my starting point and my end point and one of these interim points has to be on one of the Q curves. So from our starting point we could move up a constant conductance circle up to the Q contour to create our first interim point. And of course, if we went up the constant conductance circle, this would mean adding a shunt inductor. Or we could go down the constant conductance circle 
to the point where it meets the Q contour and this would mean adding a shunt capacitor. So let's do just that. Let's go down the constant conductance circle to the uh, point where it intersects the Q contour. Because we are uh, starting with an element in shunt, we need to change our marker readout into admittance. And to do this, we just right click on the chart, go on to properties, and then on the markers tab, we select admittance as a display type. Click on apply, and then OK. So you can see that the susceptance at my starting point is 0 millisiemens. And uh, you can also see that if I hover over with the mouse on the point that I want to get to, you can see that we've got a susceptance of 16 millisiemens. So the difference is in susceptance between my target point and my start point is 16 millisiemens. And this is positive, which corresponds to a shunt capacitor. And the value of this capacitor turns out to be 2.6 picofarads. So as we did in the previous tutorial, let's just go back to the schematic and then uh, fetch a capacitor and insert it in shunt with our load resistor. Then give it the value that we've uh, worked out, which is 2.6 picofarads. Click on simulate and go back to the graph. Now we can see that we've reached the point that we wanted to get to. Now, to be able to get to the center of the chart from here, we need to have two elements. One that uh, will take us to the unity constant conductance or unity constant resistance circle and another one that then will move us down whichever circle we select down to the center of the chart. Now, there isn't really a circle uh, with our current grid that uh, covers the point that we are at at the moment. So what we can do is right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, and then uh, go on to the Grid tab and select the density of the contour lines to be normal. Click on Apply and then OK. You can see that things get a lot busier, but sometimes we just have to do this to be able to see uh, where we're going next. So this is our starting point. So we would be going up all the way this constant resistance circle and uh, we have uh, two uh, intersections with the uh, constant conductance circle, a lower one here and then an upper one further on. And we'll go to the top one this time. So because we are moving along a circle of constant resistance, we are adding an, an element in series. So again, we need to change the marker readout to uh, have an impedance readout. So let's go on to properties and then onto the markers tab and choose impedance as a readout. Click on apply and then OK. So the reactance of my starting point is about uh, minus 49 ohms. And then I'm going up the circle all the way to the upper point where, where it intersects the constant conductance circle. And we can look at the reactance of our target point, which is uh, roughly 25 ohms, just over. So if we look at the difference between the uh, reactance of our target point and the reactance of a starting point, we get about uh, 75 ohms, which is positive and hence corresponds to a series inductor. And the value of this inductor turns out to be roughly 11.9 nanoharries. So let's go back to our schematic and make a little bit of space for ourselves and then insert an inductor in series with the rest of the network that we've worked out and give it a value of 11.9 nanoharries. Click on simulate and then go back to the graph. And you can see that we are roughly where we want it to be, on the constant conductance circle. Now, to get to the center of the chart and achieve our match, we must move down the constant conductance circle, which means adding another shunt capacitor. And, uh, of course, we are adding an element in shunt, so we need to have a readout in terms of uh, admittance. So right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, change the readout, to admittance, click on apply and OK. So the starting point for us is around uh, minus 20 millisiemens in terms of susceptance and then obviously the end point is about zero in terms of susceptance. So the difference between the two is 20 millisiemens which is positive and hence it corresponds to a shunt capacitor. The value of this shunt capacitor turns out to be about 3.2 picofarads. So let's go back to our schematic and then uh, we can just uh, use control c and control v to add a capacitor again and then we can change its value to uh, 3.2 picofarads and then connect everything together now simulate and let's go back to our graph and we can see that we are in the center of the chart here 
Now, if you feel that this whole procedure, particularly with a three element match, is quite fiddly, uh, then you're in luck because there is a much, much easier way to carry this out. Microwave Office has got a great wizard which allows you to carry out a match of any type between any terminations, whether they are resistive or complex, and to also pick the topology that you deem most suitable. So what we'll do next is open up our wizard and work out two matching networks for our terminations. One of the pi type, so pretty much the same as what we've done here, and the other one of the L type. And then we'll see how uh, it is much easier to uh, work them out with the wizard, and also how it, this can make it even easier to compare the frequency response of the two. To see the list of wizards under the project tab, just uh, click on the plus next to wizards, and then select the I filter wizard by double clicking on it. Now you can see that a window opens up which gives you an option to uh, create a matching network. So we can just uh, click on matching network and then we need to select bandpass. Uh, you won't be able to uh, select a matching network under, under any of the other types. So remember you need to pick bandpass. In terms of realization we will see in the future that there are different ways to uh, realize our inductors and capacitors. And in some instances it's easier to realize them by using microstrip lines rather than using lumped elements. But for simplicity now we'll keep it to lumped elements. Then on the filter type you must select impedance matching network and then click OK. Now on this window you can select your source and load impedances and they can be of any type. For example you could have a source impedance which comprises of a resistor and a capacitor in series or uh, a series RL uh, or many other different types that are listed on here. Same thing for the load impedance. In our case we just have a resistor impedance of 50 ohms as a source impedance and a resistive impedance of 125 ohms as a load impedance. So click on OK and then you get to this other window where there are other things that you can select. First of all your center frequency and uh, that's 1000 and then you can select the Q also. But of course uh, the Q can only be selected with certain types of networks not with all of them. At the moment the section that we've got selected is a low pass L section. So you can see already on the graph here that um, the uh, right topology has been displayed and uh, the element values are, are also displayed already for the terminations that you've chosen. So this network will give you a match between a 50 ohm termination and a, and a 125 ohms termination. The other thing that you can do is uh, look at the uh, graphs here which give you both the insertion loss and the return loss so your S21 and your S11 uh, readings and uh, you can uh, for example increase the span of frequency over which you can see the response and you can see that now this starts looking a bit more like the L section that we had. The other thing that I find very useful is to actually uh, click on this button which allows you to select a spot frequency mode and when you do that you can actually see how the L section matching was carried out. So on the Smith chart below you can see the branches that were, that were used, the path that was used to get from one point to the other. Now in our case uh, we can select for example pi section CLC which is a pi section with two capacitors in parallel and one inductor in series. And then when we select this immediately we get uh, a new schematic displayed with uh, the relevant elements and their values. We get uh, a new graph for the return loss and the insertion loss and, and also we can see on the Smith chart uh, the path that was followed to carry out the matching which looks very much like the one that we had. Bear in mind that in this case you can actually choose the Q. So uh, before a Q was grayed out because I had an L section and hence I wasn't able to choose the Q. But in this case uh, the Q can be selected. Of course uh, we've got two which is the same as we've used but for example I could change that to three. And then you see that automatically the path that you follow on the Smith chart changes because you have to touch a different Q contour uh, to be able to um, get to the designed goals that you want and also the values on the schematic have changed. Same thing for the frequency response which has also changed. So let's go back to two for the Q. So we get a circuit which is very similar to the one that we designed 
the values are just marginally different. Now what we can do is actually export this design into a schematic and also into a new graphs that will show the frequency response of the network. To do this just click on OK and then on the uh, window that you get to just click on generate design. Then you get to give a name to uh, this design. Let's call it Pi Match I Match. And then you can select various options for uh, the creation of your design. Uh, you can use variables for the element parameters, which you may or may not want to do. I personally usually untick this one. And then you can also s select a frequency range uh, over which you want to have the graphs displayed for the uh, return loss and for the insertion loss. So let's set a uh, similar range to the ones we used in previous tutorial. Let's say we start from 100 megahertz and we go up to 4000 and uh, we'll choose um, a few more points than this, say 400 and then click OK. Now click OK on here as well and uh, we can see that we've got a new rectangular graph which shows the insertion loss which is the S21 measurement and the return loss which is uh, the S11 measurement for uh, a new schematic called Pi Match I Match which is also here under the project tab so I can just double click on this schematic and you can see how a new schematic was created with uh, all the elements that um, uh, we wanted in our design and the relevant values for them. If I want to compare the performance of this uh, Pi section design with an L section, I can just open the filter wizard again, go again to Matching Networks and Bandpass, and then Impedance Matching Network, click on OK. Uh, the right terminations are already selected, so we can just click on OK. And then I can choose the type as L section low pass. And automatically, as you can see, we've got a different topology here with the relevant values. Uh, we can also have a look at the uh, path that was followed by selecting the uh, spot frequency mode. Now, as before, we click on OK. And then we click on Generate Design. We'll call this design L section I match. And then we select the frequency range, which is identical to the one we selected before of 100 to 4000 megahertz with 400 points. Click on OK and then OK again. And now you can see that we've got another graph called L section I match with the uh, return loss S11 and the insertion loss S21 for the L section. And also there is a new schematic called L section I match which has got uh, the uh, elements that we want in our uh, matching network and also the uh, relevant values. I can display the graphs side to side for instance to see uh, how the two frequency responses compare. We can go to Window, select Close All and just open up uh, the uh, two graphs that we're interested in then go back to Window and uh, select Tile Vertical. But the best thing would be to be able to display uh, the results of the frequency sweeps for the different networks on the same graph. Now I'm not particularly interested in the return loss so I'll just delete that from both graphs. And then what I can do is simply drag one of the measurements from one of the graphs onto the other graph and then this should display both of them on the same graph. So you can see now that uh, we've got both of the measurements displayed on the same graph and this means that I can uh, uh, compare them more easily. And all I did was to just drag the measurement from under one of the graphs to another graph so they could just be both on the same one. And as we did before we can just right click on the graph, go on to properties and then uh, to axis and select a logarithmic scale. Click on apply and then OK.